pose. Turn the palms out. Inhale, rise up. This pose is called Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands by your sides. Tadasana. Bend the knees. Cactus arms. Inhale. Chair pose. Exhale, hands by your side. Tadasana. Continue. Inhale, rise up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale. Tadasana. Focus on your breathing as you move now. Bend your knees. Inhale. Chair pose. Let me guide you through the poses. You focus on your breath. Exhale. Tadasana. Standing up. Hands by your side. Inhale. Rise up. Urdhva Hastasana. Arms up to the sky. Reach tall. And exhale. Tadasana. Hands by your sides. Bend the knees. Inhale. Cactus arms. Chair pose. Exhale, stand up, Tadasana. Rise up, inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Tadasana, exhale, hands by your sides. Again, chair pose, inhale, Utkatasana is the Sanskrit term. Exhale, stand up, Tadasana. Okay, maintain that breathing, but step your right foot back and take your feet wide. Turn your right toes out, and I'm gonna mirror you. So this is my left foot. Your right foot will be turned out towards the front of your yoga mat. Bend the knee. So now your front leg is bent, and we call this warrior two shape in the legs. Keep the warrior two shape in the legs, and just gather strength by pulling your feet toward each other. You'll feel your back inner thigh, just like you did when you squeezed the block in chair pose. And with that strength in your legs, then lift up through the sides of the body and reach the arms out to the sides. I make believe like I have a shelf under my hands and I just push down into the imaginary shelf to activate the muscles of the back body. The gaze, you're looking over your front hand. The breath is slow and steady. This pose, Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2, is a pose that mimics the warriors. The idea is that we're fierce and strong like a warrior in the body, but the mind is soft and focused. On this exhale, you can straighten the leg, turn your toes in, and switch sides. Bend now what's your left knee, and settle in for a moment with your breath. In this warrior stance, warrior two, pull your feet toward each other and gather strength. Think about embodying the characteristics of a warrior in your legs, from your hips down, strength, power, and stability. Press your front heel down into the ground and you'll start to feel your base of your buttocks engage. From that power, from that strength that you're cultivating in your legs, then find freedom in the upper body, reach the arms out. As your gaze turns over your front hand, focus on the softness of your breath and the power of your physical body. Feeling the sensations that you are experiencing. This awareness, this presence, this is yoga. Staying with that ujjayi breath, the gentle whisper in and out through the nose. One more breath. On this exhale, straighten the leg and place the hands to the hips. Turn those toes in. And the opposite side, the same side again that we started with. Bend the knee into warrior two, which is now your right leg forward. With your right leg forward, press down into the heel, gather strength in the legs. Instead of taking the arms out to the side, we're gonna take a pose called Parsva Kanasana, side angle pose. And we'll do a variation that's a little bit more stable. So this variation has the elbow on the thigh and the hand on the hip. We embody the same stability as a warrior in the legs. Pull the feet toward each other and press the front heel down from that strength in the legs, turn the navel in the chest. I like to 
keep my shoulder, my top shoulder, up a little bit and then back to open up the chest. The higher up you go, the more mobility in the shoulder, the more openness you'll have in the chest. If it's feasible to turn your head a little bit, that's an option. I also just like to look straight ahead in my pose. Two more breaths. And as you're breathing, you're focusing on, can I be strong in my lower body? Feel the sensations I'm creating with my strength. Soft in the outer layer of my skin and my eyes. And then press down into your feet and rise up. Turn the toes in and switch sides again. Bending your left knee, place the forearm on the thigh, Parsva Konasana, side angle preparation. Same idea. We take a breath, become present. Then gather strength, pull your feet toward each other, and push the front heel straight down into the ground. Now the idea is when you push straight down into the ground, it's like when you would climb up a step, you would push down, your pelvis can turn open a little bit more. You'll feel a deeper stretch in the inner thigh, but an engagement of your front buttocks. Turn the navel, turn the chest. Again, option to look up to the sky if that's comfortable on your neck, or you can just look straight forward. Stay focused on your breathing. Steady, even breath, the sound of ujjayi. Focus on the sensations of strength and power, feeling that sense of being a warrior in your legs. But freedom through your breath through the softness of your gaze. Push down into your feet, rise up, and turn the toes back in. Bring the heels in, bend the knees into horse stance. To gather more strength into this pose, what I like to do is kind of pull the backs of my heels toward each other, and then as if I'm gonna jump off my feet, I push down into my heels as if I'm about to stand up. And then I just pause. I keep the strength in the legs and then take the arms into a cactus shape. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. So as we hold this fierce stance, this powerful pose, this strong muscular position, see if you can Relax the outer body. The skin is soft. The breath is soft. Your mind is soft, but the body is strong. You'll start to feel the heat building up. One more breath. And stand up. Shift your weight into your left foot. And as you do, you're going to notice that your hips kind of lean out to the side. Attempt to shift your weight into your left foot, and I'll mirror, so it's gonna be my right, your left, without letting the hip sag out to the side, so squeeze it in. As you squeeze your hip in, you're gonna feel the outer hip muscles toning. Keep that and see if you can get light on your right foot. Bring your right foot to the upper inner thigh, this is option one, or your shin, option two, and option three, you can use like a bit of a kickstand for more balance. Choose what is appropriate for you, wherever you're at right now, where you're feeling it's not too challenging to balance. Maybe you fall once or twice and that's okay. But somewhere that you feel relatively confident that you can hold this for a few breaths. Compact the pose by squeezing your foot and your inner thigh toward each other just a little bit, not too much, you'll throw yourself off. Then from that compactness of the legs, lift up, and you can take the arms into that cactus-like shape. Think about drawing the elbows back, the hands slightly back, and opening the chest. Two more breaths. Again, finding drishti, looking at one point. And it's the last breath. Just hold it, maybe radiate through your fingers, spread them wide, look up just slightly at a new point, and then slowly release the hands and release your foot. Take a breath, feel both feet. 
shift your weight into what's your right foot now, and you're gonna feel that the right hip wants to sag out to the side, squeeze it in. And as you squeeze it in, but shift your weight at the same time, you'll feel that the left foot gets light, and then you have your options. The kickstand, the shin, or the inner thigh. Choose what's appropriate for you now, and know that as you repeat this practice several times, you can choose different variations. Once you have your legs and your choice, just squeeze them into each other ever so slightly so you feel a little bit more stable. And from that stability, then expand the pose by taking the arms up into this cactus-like shape. Let the underside of your abdomen lift, let your chest lift, and now choose a point to gaze at. Look at softly with your eyes. Know that it is okay to waver, it's okay to fall. Just keep coming back into the pose, into your sense of balance. And if you practice balance, you will become more balanced. On this last breath, just kind of reach through your fingertips, open up, look up slightly, and then release the pose. From Tadasana, find chair pose, bend the knees, open the arms in this cactus shape, and exhale now. We're gonna place our hands on our thighs. And with the hands on the thighs, start to straighten the legs slowly, and maybe you can place your hands on your shins. If you have yoga blocks handy, you can place them in front. That's really nice, because it helps you shift your weight forward, help you open your hamstrings. But if you don't have yoga blocks, totally fine. You can place your hands on your shins for now. And see if with your hands on your shins or your yoga blocks, if you can lift the back of the pelvis up and lift your chest up, think about making your back more or less flat like a table. Take a full breath in here and a long breath out. One more breath in. And as you breathe out, bend your knees all the way, place your fingertips to the ground, and we'll step the right foot back so the left foot is forward. Going with that energy of balance, pull your feet toward each other to become more stable in the hips. At first, this pose is going to be really balanced because we have our fingers on the ground. But if we start here with a very balanced pose, we can activate the muscles that will help us when our arms are up in the air. So what I'd like you to do is pull your feet toward each other and press your front heel down round your upper back slightly when you do that. What I'd like you to try to target when you press down through the heel is your underside of your front buttocks. That strength is what's going to hold you up when we go into the next pose. Step forward, bring your fingertips out front, inhale, you can keep your knees bent, lift your chest. Step the opposite leg back, exhale. As you breathe in, pull your feet toward each other and get a little lift in the hips. And then press down through the front heel and round your back slightly so you feel the underside of your buttocks engaged. Lengthen the skull forward, get long in the spine and the back of the neck. Take one more breath. Exhale it out. Place the fingers out in front. Inhale, step forward, bent knees. And again, step the opposite foot back so the left foot is forward again. Place your hands now on the front knee. Before you, you come up, push down through your heel, round your back, and rise up. Pitch your body forward on the same angle as your back leg. You'll notice that I'm not sinking into the back ankle, but I'm actually pushing off of my back foot so my calf is engaged. As I press down into the front heel, I start to round the back. And now we'll take that cactus arms. This is the challenge. Bend your elbows and bring your arms back. Take a full breath in. And exhale, hands back to your thigh. Two more. Inhale. Push down into your heel. Full breath in like wings open up. And exhale, hand back to the thigh. Last one. Push down into your heel. Open up the chest. And exhale, hands to the ground. Step forward and keep your knees bent. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, step the opposite foot back. Push down into your heel, round your back, and place your hands on your knee. 
So again, I'm pushing off of the back foot so my back calf is activated, giving me more balance. I'm pushing down through my front heel to activate the buttocks, giving me more steadiness. A little pulling of the feet diagonally toward each other also gives me some steadiness. And I keep that steadiness, that stability, that strength in my legs, and then just start to use the breath to open up the upper body. Here we go. Inhale, cactus arms. Exhale, release. Inhale, cactus, open up the chest. Exhale, release. One more time, inhale. Strong legs, open the body, open up the upper body. Exhale, release, and take your fingers to the ground. Inhale, step forward, half lift. And this time, exhale, start to bow over your thighs. Inhale, half lift. Step the right foot back. Now, high lunge. We'll start by placing the hands on the knees. Walk the hands back so you become more upright in the torso. Push off of the back foot, but press down into the front heel. So those are kind of opposite, opposing actions. As we push off and resist in the front foot, we're stuck in the middle, stable. Between those energies, Lift the upper body up, get bright, get light, and take the arms into this cactus shape. Let's go back to our breathing and movement. Stay strong in the legs, but here we go. We move the upper body. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, cactus arms. Open the chest. Again, inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus arms. One more time. Inhale, reach up, celebrate your body. And exhale slow, hands to the ground. Step forward, inhale, bent knees, chest lifted. Exhale, bow over your thighs. Inhale, half lift, preparing. Stepping the opposite foot back. Something that's helping me with balance, by the way, is that my feet are hip width apart. Keeping your feet wide, hands on the front knee. Pushing off of the back foot and pressing down into the front heel, come more upright. Once you feel you're, you're more upright and you're kind of stuck between these two places, the back foot pushing your body forward, your front heel pushing your body upward by pushing down, lift the sides of the body, keep the steadiness, the power, the stability of your legs, and let's move the body with the breath, the upper body. Inhale, cactus arms, hold, exhale the breath out. Keep the chest open. Inhale, rise up, high lunge. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bend the elbows. One more time. Inhale, reach up, stretch your fingers up and out. Exhale, hands to the ground. Step forward. Use your hands out in front to make this easier. Exhale, bow over your thighs. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Step your right foot back so your left foot is forward. You can use a block underneath your right hand if you wish for a little more stability and your left hand onto your thigh. If this is challenging, if you're getting tired at this point, I would recommend placing the back knee down and if that's a little bit sensitive, you can place a blanket underneath your back knee. So I'll demonstrate with the knee down. You're going to turn your chest open, turn in the belly, and reach the hand up if it's accessible. Otherwise, I like to keep the hand on the knee to help me just turn a little bit. Take two more breaths. One more breath. and slowly release. If you have the block, you can put it aside. Walk the hands to the inside. If the knee is down, lift it up and turn the heel down. Modification of side angle pose. Your hands are both on the ground on the inside and you might stay here or perhaps if you have the flexibility, you can bend your elbows out to the side and bow. Know that flexibility is gained over time, so rather than forcing it, which would actually cause the body to tighten, simply stay in a place where you feel a little bit of a stretch, but not overwhelm. 
And the way that you can get more flexible is actually heating up and strengthening the muscles. So my suggestion is this. Pull your feet toward each other to activate the inner legs. Press your front heel down. And then as you press your front heel down, you can stick your buttocks up to the sky slightly to bow a little deeper. Take one more full breath in. And out. Walk the hands back towards the front of the yoga mat. Pivot the back heel up. Step forward. Keep your knees bent. Make it easier. And step the opposite foot back. Again, option to place the knee on the ground. It's nicer on the knee to point the back foot. I like toes tucked for a little bit more power. But you can make that choice for yourself. Again, you can put a blanket underneath your back knee. Another suggestion, if you don't have a blanket nearby is you can roll over the side of your mat for a little bit more cushion. So I'll keep that variation and I'll also bring a block in. You can do the same if you have one. You could also use fingertips as you see I'm doing here and place the other hand on your knee. Start your twist, turn your belly, turn your chest. If you'd like, you can reach the hand up to the sky. That's an option. I'll show that on this side so you can see the difference. But I'm not uh, falling into the bottom hand. I'm actually pushing off of the, the ground. So I'm pushing and elevating my body, keeping it more light. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm pulling my back knee towards my front foot to give a little bit of lift in the hips to make this more stable, a little more strong, a little more steady. One more breath, reach up a little bit taller if you have the hand up, and then slowly release. If you have the block, move it aside. If you fold it over your yoga mat, unfold it, and pivot the back heel down like side angle pose or warrior stance, and walk the hands to the inside of your foot. You know, there is an option here if this is too intense, you could place your hands on blocks like so. This is a great option. For me, I'm going to keep the fingertips. I like this variation. To gather strength, pull your feet gently toward each other. Option to press the front heel down if you want to gain more power in the front hip. I always do. It gives me more stability, and that greater stability gives me more mobility. The body begins to trust you when you're stable. And when the body trusts you and when you're stable, your muscles start to open up. Most of us hold tension in the body simply because the body's trying to keep us safe from falling. So the best way to build flexibility, in my opinion, is actually to build stability. Push into your feet, come on up, walk the hands around to the front, and pivot the back heel up. Step forward. This time with your knees bent, place your hands to your outer shins. And you brace your shins inward with your hands to give a little resistance. Push your backs of your heels outward, the backs of your hamstrings outward, like you're trying to turn the fronts of your thighs inward. You're going to push against the strength of your hands, so isometrically pushing the backs of your legs apart will engage your outer hips. Once you feel your outer hips engaging, do your best to move your legs towards straight. Now, there's two ways to do this. You could either try to press your knees backward, which I'd like you not to do, it will typically stretch the back of the knee too much. But rather, lean forward with your weight into your big toes. As you lean forward towards your big toes, press your big toe down into the mat, and you'll feel the arch of your foot engage so that you don't fall over. You'll also, from that lifting of the arch and the engagement of the inner muscles of your foot, you'll start to activate the chain of the back body, which goes up through the calves, through the hamstrings, and the buttocks. So keep the big toe pressing down, and as you do so, keep the backs of your hamstrings apart and lift the sit bones up to try to straighten the legs. So press the buttocks up the best you can towards straight. Don't worry about straightening. Don't worry about being totally straight. Just the energetic movement towards straight and then release the fingertips to the ground. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, bow. Inhale, halfway lift. Bend the knees, exhale, hands to the knees. 
Inhale, lift your body up to stand. Pause and just observe how you feel so far. Step your feet wide. And with your hands on your hips, soften your knees. Tip your pelvis forward and try to get your fingertips on either blocks or fingertips to the ground options. And do what's suitable for you. If you don't have blocks and you can't reach the ground, I highly recommend grabbing a chair and just putting your hands up on a chair. It's a great option. Let's try these actions. Pull your feet toward each other until you feel your inner thighs engage. And then try to lift or stick your buttocks up to the sky behind you to arch your low back more. This may be enough for you. If you want to go deeper than this, perhaps you take the blocks down a height. Maybe you decide that, okay, now that I've been in this pose for a few moments, you can take your fingertips to the ground. And those of you with greater range of motion, more flexibility in the hamstrings, you can bend your elbows. Again, I want to stress that trying to force your hamstrings to open is actually what makes them tighter. So better to stay lifted and just feel a stretch about 50% and perhaps focus more on the strength of your legs, squeezing your legs toward each other and sticking your buttocks up more than anything else. Back to your breathing. Two more breaths. And final breath. Bend your knees, place your hands on your hips, and rise up to stand. Turn your right toes out to face the front of your yoga mat and bend the knee. Side angle pose. Taking these poses just a little bit deeper now, you have the option with your block to place it the inside of your leg. This is what I would choose. Press your front heel straight down. Same actions that we've been doing. Squeeze the back leg forward and activate your inner legs. Then if you can, you reach your bottom hand to the block and put some weight down into the hand. Turn the navel. As you turn your belly to the sky, your front knee will wing in. If you press your heel down, it'll be able to keep the knee out. It will be a little bit nicer on the pose and on your body. Turn your belly, turn your chest, and maybe now stretch the hand up to the sky. Just one more breath here. And exhale, release. Let's take the toes, pivot them in, switch sides, bend the knee and take your yoga block to the other side. You can start in your side angle preparation with the forearm on the thigh and just get your feet set up. Again, just to remind you, the front heel bisects the back arch. You can always heel toe your feet around to make that easier. Once you have that, pull your feet toward each other, lift in the hips, press the front heel down and reach the hand, if possible, to the block. You're always welcome to stay in the previous variations if I ever uh, instruct moving on. So don't be afraid to stay right where you are. Turn the belly, turn the chest. Maybe now we can reach the hand up and make this a little more expansive. Let's do just two more breaths, inhaling and exhaling. One more breath, inhaling, stretch out with your fingers, lift up and exhale, hands to hips. Straighten and stand. And keep the eyes closed if you'd like. Start to straighten the legs. And let the as you straighten the legs, let your thighs roll out to the sides, feet about outer hip width or even a little bit wider apart. Palms face up. This is the final pose called Shavasana. The pose means corpse pose. Literally, we do our best to completely let go in a way that allows 
every part of us to surrender to life itself. So the muscles relax, the bones settle into the ground, the mind settles into the sensations that the body is experiencing, and we become heavy and still like the earth. Surrendered, relaxed. Release. And just feel your body. Gently bring your mind back to the sensations of the body and observe that you're breathing. Deepening the breath. down into the fingers and toes. Stretch your fingers wide, wiggle the toes. Reach the arms overhead. Bend the knees. Roll to your side. And make your way up to a seated position of your choosing. Let the spine grow tall all the way up through the skull. But drop the weight of your body straight down to the center of your pelvis. Place the hands at the heart. Feel the balance between the stability of grounding downward and the lightness of rising up through the central column of your spine, through the top of the head. Maintain that balance as you move throughout your day, as you move throughout your life. Bowing inward in gratitude for this body. Thanks for taking the time to dedicate a little moment to your self to your practice, for, to caring for you. So important. Namaste.